is charging. This video time financial advice. This is part two of the first interview with Strongman Personal Finance. This video is made for entertainment purpose, uh, purpose only. Okay, what's up, guys? Okay, so part two. Um, so uh, a strong man is going to be starting his channel, or not restarting it, but will continue to do less uh, scam calling or grifter slaying uh, style. So more of a, uh, I don't know. So what's your, what's going to be your your goal now? Your 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 vision for for the new you after you're going to stop going after the grifters as much as you were before so yeah so mainly i just want to cover whatever i feel like covering number one number two i, I do enjoy the exercise of looking through financial statements so I, i'm going to be looking at a lot of individual stocks not endorsing them but just talking about them like hey this at&t this is the balance sheet. This is what's happened recently. These are the risks, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to do stuff like that with individual stocks, but not endorse them one way or the other. Then I'm going to talk about ETFs because a lot of people, you know, they just buy ETFs. Like, oh, SCHD or this or that. And it's like, do you know what you're buying? Yeah. So I'm going to talk about that. Basically, like that kind of stuff. And then, uh, you know, maybe some news every once in a while if it's a big deal and you know kind of just whatever i feel like doing to be honest but like i i definitely want to you know tamper down on the grifter stuff because it attracts a lot of angry people it's uh it's very exhausting after a while dealing with the, just like the dumbest people in the world commenting in your comments <laughs> now now i meant i remember you mentioned in one of your videos that it was even hurting your workplace with your boss right like one of them was trying to to hurt your 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 um, career correct yeah there was there was somebody that uh it's okay don't you don't have to say names okay. yeah but uh he uh he was basically telling his fault he like he found where i worked and he How? was mentioning my co he was mentioning my company and uh in his live streams and saying man if somebody calls that company and tells them what Chris Bell's all about. I don't know. It's not my fault. So basically, he was just calling out my employer and, you know, cajoling his followers to, uh, I don't know, call my workplace or harass my boss or I don't know. I don't think they, they never did it because I actually quit that job partially because of that. But I'm not sure Damn. if anybody did it, but it's still kind of messed up, you know. That is messed up. I mean, someone. some people take this stuff because, like, this is their livelihood. You know, YouTube is not my livelihood. I mean, I make money off of it, obviously, but I don't need it to survive. Right. Some of these guys need it. Like, they need the YouTube. If they don't have YouTube, they have nothing. So when you threaten them or go after them, they'll punch back. Okay. Has uh, Are you still cool with uh, me, Kevin? Yeah, over. I mean, we actually haven't talked in a long time because, like, I don't really talk about him, him anymore. So I guess he doesn't care about me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't. I don't have any major problems with him. He's not talking about individual stocks. He's more like talking about macroeconomics. Which, I mean, what's really the harm in that? Is that really hurting people? Right, he's right. he's more of a news channel. So I, I don't really have any like major beefs with him. Right. Okay. Okay. So. Okay, next question. Um, what would be your biggest loss out of all the stocks that I remember you threw like 500 or like $600 at like Baba? And, and so out of all your stock picks that you've done, what has been the biggest gainer and the biggest loser? The biggest gainer, I bought HPQ, uh, Hewlett Packard, and... Uh, Right after I bought it, or a couple of months after I bought it, Warren Buffett bought it. So, like, everybody went crazy and bought the stock. <laughs> it was pure luck. So, the stock just went up a lot. I was like, you know what? I made, like, 30%. I was like, I'm going to sell all this garbage. So, I just sold it and put it back in BT or something. So, that was my biggest gainer. Uh, my biggest loss. So, there was this penny stock that these uh, these clowns called Alpha Status stocks were pumping. I remember them. And, yeah. And then I was like, I was like, these clouds are going to pump this stock up. So like for fun, I was like, I'll throw a couple hundred bucks into it. 
and the stock <laughs> is down like 95 percent holy crap 95 I mean, it, it was a worthless company like, like this this was not something i bought because of the financial statements it was like i was like these clowns are gonna pump the stock a little bit and then i'll sell it and that's not what happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah i even why you, like I'm, I'm not saying i'm the best stock picker in the world but usually when i buy a stock it's like for fun you know or it's like a trade or something like that it's not it's not something that i'm really taking seriously it's more of like a sport right right okay um well i used to i remember i remember right when i was um looking up like Jeremy and uh, Stockmo and all of them I was actually day trading and I was doing pretty well until I was I got too overconfident and then yeah I lost I lost quite a bit of money and so I, I try to do long term just buying companies and I also failed with Stockmo and Jeremy so uh, I and then I, I attempted so now I know ETFs is the way to go and day trading, even though you as educated as you are, y you also had, you know, more losses than returns. So I think that speaks volume to everyone that's trying to um, day trade uh, in any way, shape, or form. It's it's really, it's it's. I don't think even the biggest professional makes. Um, it takes a lot of, I don't know, discipline, but I, I just don't do that. But I think it's it, it speaks volume that you're mentioning that. Because you're as, you have a bachelor's degree, you are a CPA, and, you know, even day trading wasn't for you. So... Yeah, it's, it's, it's stupid at the end of the day. Like, you could, be the, you could be a PhD. You could be a genius. You could be a Mensa. That doesn't mean that you're going to be a good investor. It's, it, there's a huge emotional component. And there's an element of luck. That's why I always say 95% plus in ETFs. And if you want to have fun, use the other 5% for doing whatever crap you want to do. But you should not have the vast majority of your money in a individual stocks or trading or whatever you want. Because there's just there's too much risk and it's too unpredictable. There's some yeah. things you just can't predict. And when, when those things happen, you just get destroyed. Yeah, yeah. I... Now I know. Um, so, okay. On this next segment, I want to give you a list of names. And I want you to rate them from 1 to 10. Uh, rate them from 1 to 10. In your opinion, if they are stand-up people. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Number one, Grand Stefan. Five. 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 Five? Really? I'm surprised. Yeah, okay. he, he, he's got some dirty sides to him. Try. He's not. He's not perfect. Okay. Okay. All right. Andrew Jeek. <laughs> <laughs> like three or four? Three. <laughs> three and a half. Three and a half. There you go. Okay. Okay. Um, stock mo. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. <laughs> he's a piece of trash. Not even half, man. <laughs> he's a sea scum. Hey, scum. all right. I still can't believe. Okay, I remember the video you used to expose him, where he showed a family member. He shared the story of how of a family member how he had cancer or something, and he proposed a stock so everyone would buy, and he went up. So he was using the heartstrings of people, and that stock went up, and then he dumped it hard on them, and when he got called out. His wife stepped in and said, what would you guys have done? Huh? What, what would you all have done? This is, you know, we have to pay our house and we have to... We, there's, I couldn't believe it. Dude, he's, he's gross. Like, he is a... People don't understand how nasty some of these people are. Like, Stockmo, yeah, he uses the cancer. Basically, he's like, oh, my wife has cancer, so I can scam you. That's his philosophy. He can just do whatever he wants because his wife has cancer. It's like, no, if your wife has cancer, you could just not scam people. Like, there, there's other options. <laughs> and there's people still following him. It's Yeah, he gets like 10, 15, 20,000 views. It's crazy. That's why, you see my frustration, man? I just, I can't stand this. <laughs> I see, I see it, stupid. I see it. All right, let's continue down the list. Okay, Stockbo, Zero, 
Um, let's see. Uh, Jeremy Lef <laughs> Lefufu. Negative ten. That guy's. He's Dude, worse than Stock Mo. You think? Oh yeah, Jeremy scummed the earth. I thought they were both in the same level with with no. um, Stock Mo. Jeremy's worse. Jeremy's whoa. Jeremy's nasty. He's no a way. Nasty boy. Cause I, no, I see why now. I do remember when you exposed his financial fortress, and Homeboy was promising like thirty percent returns. Absolutely. Okay, you're right. He was guaranteeing that, and even in the bear market. Okay, I totally forgot about that fact wow okay okay i can see now he's a scumbag <laughs> okay so uh all right so now let's get to the these are people that i consider to have more credibility they have nothing in comparison with these four now clear value tax he's low man i'd say now three. now you exposed his uh crypto I, that also caught me by surprise when he said, I'm selling my channel or part of my revenue. I I, I was, that caught me off guard. Not, not going to lie, that was a little bit questionable in my in my opinion. And when you mentioned that, I, I don't know. Like, so I can, I can understand though why you give him three because we're going to understand. He's done some weird stuff. Like I heard about he pumped KuCoin and then he deleted all his old video. Basically, if he makes a mistake, he just deletes his old videos. And if somebody deletes a lot of their old videos, it's a little suspicious to me. It's like, why? Well, what are your real motivations? And then now he's selling his channel. It's I don't know. I do, I don't. Yeah. I don't like the guy. There's something off about him. Well, I have to come clean. I remember I haven't deleted these the the videos but i put them on private because i had a there was a conflict that i had with a project it was in crypto and that i was with and i was on board until the i'm not going to say any names but i'm not going to call him any negative names he made just the dumbest financial decision on that project and I kept insisting, this is not going to work out. And I was one of the biggest bag holders. And I'm like, so he created a second token. It's like you start a shoe store. It goes so well. It just, you know, it you're bringing in new investors. And investors are just clapping because and applauding because you're doing so well. And then he, he surprises all of his investors. Hey, I started a shoe store right next door, but you guys aren't included. <laughs> and so all of all of them all of them were like why are you doing that and then he he called me dumb to make money. and so Probably. i exposed him and then he kicked me off so I, I sold that so i just sold it i'm like i'm out i don't care what y'all say i'm out and yeah and so and, and not just that but then he made buddies with uh another project crypto project and he started promoting that pro project and so uh, it was just, it was just a big circus that, so I was forced to do and hide those videos because it, it, it and then so my followers were wondering why I stayed there so, as long as I did. I should have just left immediately after he made that move. And so, and so that I have to come clean, you know, uh, on that. Well, it, it's okay to pry. I mean, like if it's for like legitimate reasons, there's nothing wrong with privating a video. Like, I've, I've done it, like, once or twice when I've said something I thought was too extreme. But it, it's when you're trying to hide, when you're trying to portray yourself as, like, this genius that predicts everything, and then you hide your bad predictions, that's where it gets sketchy. Because you, you're basically, you're only showing the good side of yourself. Uh, that makes sense. So. I, I didn't know that about clear value tax, man. Thanks. I really appreciate that. I, I really, I'm all for hearing both sides of the story. And I always tell my followers, listen to both sides of the story. You need to hear both sides of the story, but you got to have the facts. You need the facts so you can come down to the proper conclusion. So I, I didn't know that. Um, well, I knew he, I knew he hit videos because like, I, I remember going through his Twitter. Because a lot of the times you, you can catch people because they'll share something on their Twitter. And then when you go down their Twitter, you'll see like the link is broken to the video. And you'll click on it and you'll see that it's like privated or whatever. 
so you know they're there's something they're doing something you know <laughs> You got to do some research. Though. You got to find it. I just remembered I made a video of one of his predictions. And then when my followers tried to refer to the video, it was no longer available. Available, But my video of his video was. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, if you want to expose scammers, you got to like download their videos. Cause You're they right. Hide them. They'll hide them. Dang. Okay, okay, okay. Now, I, I like a good conspiracy theory. Okay. So, I, I, they're fun. So, what do you think about Economic Ninja? <laughs> you, can, I, you know, I don't really... I, I, I I'm, really I'm going to take... Him that much. I would to take your opinion with a grain of salt because I know, I know, I just like conspiracy theorists because they're just fun. You know, the... the uh, but, yeah, what, one to ten, what do you think? Uh, honestly, like, I, I don't really... I'm trying to think about who that is. Like, I, I have a picture of, a, like, a cartoon ninja in my mind so, so no like maybe i talked about him once or twice but <laughs> yeah probably, that, probably that's him that's him he's the one that's saying oh the homes are gonna crash the housing market's gonna crash oh, right now insider information from a bank you know they're worried about the money printing and oh buy gold buy silver which i'm down for that buying gold and buying silver and but he keeps kind of a scaring people into hoarding cash it's what he's saying to wait for the dip and okay so i don't know i was hoping to see if you got any any inside scoop on him. from how he sounds he sounds I mean, maybe if he if he truly believes that stuff you know that's fine i'd maybe rate him higher but if he's doing that so he can sell gold and silver because a lot of these guys they they what they do is they, they basically say the future is going to be horrible. They try to convince you the future is going to be horrible. That's what he's saying. And then they say, well, you should buy gold and silver instead. And they and they usually have ties to that industry. Like, they're um, obviously making money somehow from that. So that's kind of – it's kind of a grift in, in and of itself because you're scaring people into buying your product. Okay. That's a whole other side of YouTube finance. Okay. So it really depends on, like – I don't I just don't know the guy enough to really know if he's – really believes what he's saying or if he's just doing that to grip got it got it okay two you're one of the three the only three that i look up to i'm gonna be straight up and up front so i'm gonna say the other twos and then a one to ten i don't know you're gonna give them a really good grade echoes from above i'd say like eight or nine i mean he's, he's pretty much honest and i, I hear you guys are our buddies are you guys buddies I mean, like, well, we're, we're, we're not, like, best friends. Like, I don't, I've never met him in person. I just know him from YouTube. Well, we, you know, we have each other's phone numbers, and we have, like, a little group chat that we text, you know, each other in. And so, I mean, I, I guess we, I guess you could say we're buddies. We're not, like, best friends, though. Bro, can I, can I be part of that group chat? Can you ask Yeah, me? you, you got to talk about index funds more, then we'll let you in. Okay. All right. All right. Deal. I'm going to, I'm going to post more. Um, I, I know I talk about crypto lately. It's because I don't know if you watched my my predictions about just the entire environment. I do believe, you know, banks are loading up on crypto and uh, BlackRock. And and so I do believe there's going to be a pump uh, on crypto. And so and I mean, I spent I spent hours during the week whenever I can just researching um and then I give people probably the 10 to 20 percent of my research. I don't research, I don't share the rest because I don't want. I still want people to do their own research uh, on stuff. So I, I'm not going to. And but I do. I'll do more ETFs. And if I do more ETF videos, you guys will let me in. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Yeah, you, you'll, you'll probably have to drop the uh, crypto thing altogether because like. You know, my fans, like, one time I had a uh, day trader on, and I just wanted to interview the guy, you know? I was like, I was just curious. And my my fans just rioted. Like, they lost their minds because they thought I was, like, endorsing a day trader. So now I'm really cautious. It's like, if you do right. crypto or day trading, like, I'm very careful about, uh, you know, having you on or including you in the group because the fans, they get pissed. That makes sense. And they get nasty. 
so I, it's not worth the drama. No, that that does make sense. I mean, uh, you, yeah, you have to you have to watch your fan base. Even though I have a small one, um, they also I do have. There's some loyal ones that completely follow my every move, and so and I and I always in my Discord I tell them, hey guys, listen, please. Whatever you, if you're buying this because I'm buying it, you know this is money that you do not need, money that you're not gonna need in decades, or money that you're willing to throw away. Just remember that I always have to. I, I'm scared to death of like losing, um, you know, credibility, and so I try to be as upfront as I can. And, but but okay, cool. Um, now, Coffeezilla. I'd say he's like a nine. Yeah. Bro, a nine? What would you give him a ten? Well, no, nobody's perfect, man. You can't be perfect. Dude, he he does more than what the FBI even does. <laughs> I mean, he's a nine's pretty good, but like ten, you have to be like Jesus, basically, you know. He has no authority. <laughs> okay, how about a nine point five? Would that be better? All right, that's that's cool. That's cool. I, I just don't want to give anybody a perfect score, except for myself. <laughs> but uh, I don't want to give anybody a perfect score. <laughs> Dude, Coffeezilla really amazed me. He he impressed me with his Logan Paul videos. And so uh, I've seen scammers. And also he went up against, uh, what's that? Oh, man, that Dex, that exchange dude. Oh, I can't remember. Not Even FTX, oh, the uh, Sam Bankman free Sam guy. Sam Bankman free. Yeah. And... He he did more than what anyone else was able to do. Hello. Hello. Give it any, you know, everybody's got their flaws. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Well, hey, thanks so much um, for coming out uh, to this interview, and I'm lo really looking forward to the part two. And yeah, you know, I, I kind of just wanted people to uh, people need to know. I believe your frustration because I think even echoes from above would at some degree agree with me that you don't deserve the hate you're, you're receiving, you know, and he's even made videos how, you know, kind of, kind of he, he, how you're shifting your, your, your purpose of the YouTube channel from Griff's lane and understanding why you're shifting it because I understand it as well. I mean, why you're you had you have to do the shift if it affected your workplace. I mean, that's dangerous. Your family depends on you, and yeah, it's, it's not a joke. People will come after you, and it, you, you might even get sued. You never know, man. It, it's crazy, it's a crazy world out there, man. And I'm sorry you're going through what. You had to go through that. You didn't deserve it. So, thanks so much. I would love to be part of the group chat. And also, I would love to interview Echoes from Above. If you're watching this, Echo, I know you're watching this. Please email me. SafeInvestorAG at gmail.com Bro, I would love to interview you. I really look up to you and uh, Strongman. And Coffeezilla, I know I'll never be able to interview Coffeezilla ever in my life. Probably, maybe there's like 1% chance. But, you know, uh, thanks. I don't know, you, you got anything, any last word, words of wisdom to uh, max share tax with Max Advantage accounts and buy total market index funds. And we got a whole other interview to do, and we'll talk about all of this. <laughs> I'm down. By the way, what do you think about real estate investing? Sorry, sorry. I, I was meaning to ask you, but we'll talk about that in the next video. And also, I want to ask you, what's your thoughts, just for the next video, on BlackRock? You know, because it's serious. They over, they've already made the paperwork submitting for a Bitcoin spot ETF. So I want, I trust your judgment, and it could get approved at any point. So I want to know... And I'm, I'm letting you know this so you can do as much research as you can. So you can give us as educated of an answer as you can. And it's one of my main factors why I'm 
you know, uh, I, I am promoting crypto uh, because the big daddy BlackRock, it's a, it's the biggest whale in my belief in the world. It's about to jump in. So, and also real estate investment. What are your thoughts? Um, do you have any real estate or would like to own any real estate or would ever own? Okay, so again, everyone, this is Safe Investor at GH for Sim Chelsea Warrior. Uh, this video is not financial advice. It was made for entertainment purposes only. And this is Christopher Bell, uh, the the man, the only one, the legend. Yes. Don't hate on this fool, okay? This guy has done <laughs> nothing but expose criminals that deserve punishment. That's all he's ever done. I've watched him for years. And for some reason, he's getting treated as one. I have no clue why, but all right. Hey, thanks, man. I'm going to pause the video right now. Y'all stay. This is Sexy Mr. GH for Sim Saucy Warrior. Stay saucy.